Tonight's top EU stories from the UNIT website include New fears over illegal migrants, thousands will head to Britain within months. Slovenia unveils reforms as it seeks to avoid EU bailout. European Parliament emerging as a serious political force. The UK should push services in the EU. Plus, will an EU referendum kill the Scottish independence referendum? I'm Rick Timmis and this is the unit nightly news. First, from our homepage, fears of a new wave of illegal immigrants were raised yesterday after Romania declared it was on the brink of joining an EU scheme to allow free movement of people. The move raises the spectra of thousands of migrants from Africa or the Far East getting into the Eastern European country across its poorly guarded borders with the aim of heading to the UK. Now, I was talking with Gavin Shepherd of MGV Media at a speaking event yesterday and he was quite adamant about figures in the millions for migrants coming from Romania and Bulgaria and how these migration figures were greater than the whole population of Bulgaria and Romania put together. And I said to Gavin that I would follow this up and get some accurate details. So here we are, population figures. Uh, Bulgaria's population is 7 million people. Romania's population is 21 million people. And expected migrants per annum, the source for this information is Migration Watch UK, is between 30 and 70,000 per year, with a central estimate of 50,000, or 250,000 people migrating to the UK over the next five years. The government of Slovenia has announced a package of measures it hopes will help avoid an EU bailout. The measures include a tax increase, a major restructuring of Slovenia's ailing banking sector and a programme of mass privatisation. Slovenia's mostly state-owned banking sector is suffering from mounting bad debts and the government has struggled to borrow money. Now, I want to add some clarity to this idea of privatisation. What's happening here is as follows. One, the EU impose regulatory rules about GDP to debt ratio with the power to penalise countries that are in breach. The Troika then rock up with a, oh, I see you're running over budget, want to borrow some money? Three, the country refuses. OK, how about some of our multinational corporates buy up some of your public assets to help pay for the imbalance that was caused by the rules our kleptocrat buddies came up with? And four, the public taxpayer then gets screwed. It's a clever scream, don't you think? Frequently dismissed as peripheral to the workings of the European Union, the European Parliament is emerging as a serious political force. The Lisbon Treaty granted the Parliament increased legislative powers in areas such as budgetary, financial and energy and agricultural affairs, boosting its authority within the broadly tripartite structure of the European Union, which also includes the Commission and the Council. This article looks at the power and reach that the EU now exerts. The UK should stop complaining about the way the European Union is going and make use of available tools to further its own interests. In doing so, it could not only rehabilitate the EU in the mind of much of British business, it could help the crisis-ridden region boost output by nearly 300 billion euros. These are the conclusions of a new report published by the think tank Open Europe, usually regarded as Eurosceptic, which examines the benefits that a full liberalisation of the EU's single market for services would bring. Ah yes, it's the liberalise your services sector, that old chestnut. Well, I'm working on a special report all about the relationship between liberalised service sector, harmonisation of the EU and US, regulatory markets via the EU-US free trade agreement, and how this all links back to privatisation of the UK National Health Service. Don't think this could happen? If you have anyone who works in the health service, go and ask them. You'll find that GP surgeries have been bought up by Virgin, as well as child protection services, and the intention is to sell the lot. Watch this space for my special report coming soon. 
The UK faces two referendums about its future, not one. As well as David Cameron's promised proper referendum on the UK's relationship with the European Union, there is also the one on Scottish independence due on the 18th of September 2014. By and large, despite similarities in the arguments involved, each of those debates has paid little regard to the other. That makes sense if the UK referendum takes place in the next UK Parliament, around 2017 or so, once the dust has settled on the Scottish vote. This article looks more closely at the relationship and the implications. Today in our video library, as you know, we have written and produced a new documentary, Betrayed, which we have submitted to the Operation Paul Revere contest at Infowars.com. We thought it would be interesting to take a look at some of the other videos that have been produced, and so through the month of May, I will pick out a daily Operation Paul Revere contest entry and provide a link to it on YouTube. Speaking of YouTube, you could really help us a great deal with our documentary and contest entry by subscribing to our channel, rating our film Betrayed, either like or dislike, but I'd prefer like, please, and most importantly, sharing it with as many people as you possibly can. So, without further ado, today's video, which I have added to our Operation Paul Revere YouTube playlist, is Political Earth, a Brobarian production by Scooter Downey and Sean Elliott. I'm Rick Timmis, reporting for the Unit Nightly News. I'll see you soon. You can get lots more news stories and information on our website, theunit.com. You can get in touch with us there, and we particularly welcome your letters and points of view. You can follow us on Twitter. Our Twitter username is the E Unit. Remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel for all of our regular updates. You can join me and the rest of the team for interactive discussion and debate on Google Plus at any time. Are you looking for a public speaker for your event? Our public speakers are happy to come and discuss Britain's relationship with the EU in your area at no cost. If you would like to add interest and value to your group event, then get in touch with us via the Word section of our website. Join us in our live Question Time style online show, The Unit Interactive, broadcast live on our website, theunit.com, and globally via thehangoutshow.com. Join our community on Google+, and you can be part of the wider public voice, united in freedom, liberty, and independence. Simply join our community, the unit on Google+, links to the community page are below. <laughs>